Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Spring 2019. It is King's Zone in the lead, one to zero against Gen G. They're on the red side in game number one, though, so blue side will need to prevail. And uh, if we've learned anything from our uh, second series of the night, it's where generally the red side is going to prevail. So this could be the opportunity for Gen G to fight back as Cuz fans rejoice that after we get the appropriate MVP for game yeah, number we game did. number one. We faith restored. Yeah. After that, um, I feel like your faith really is being uh, in a tug of war. At the it moment. is, it, you know, it really is. Sometimes the MVPs are on point. Sometimes they find the perfect clutch player. Sometimes I, I, I swear they're just, they're reaching into a hat. Or yeah. You know? Yeah. Except they rig it. Yeah. There's a little bit of a little bit of that. However, it wasn't this time. This time it was Cuz picking up yet another one. Deft is actually a bit upset because he needs to start reeling in these MVPs. Is he's on a thousand points, and he's even with Chovy at this point in time. Is there still the uh, the prize? Uh, I'm 10K? not entirely sure. It used to be that, yeah, but I don't know whether that is uh, carried over here. That'd make me really mad. I'd be a bit sad. If, if, if I was, uh, hold on, let me take a look here. If I were, no, you know what? Yes, kid, Clid can. Clid's at eight hundred. Oh, he, oh, oh, he is. See, yeah. yeah. So if I was Clid in the, well, no, he was like, he was like third. Yeah. The last MVP. Yeah, he was. Yeah. No, he was, was he fourth? No, he was third. No, he was no, no, third. Yeah, Baker yeah, was fourth. Baker was fourth, yeah. No, but actually he was first. Mm, no. Con he, well, Connor I mean, Mata was first and then Bono was second. I'm just saying that Faker was the one that actually got the MVP. So, oh, right. So he was yeah, in there the we end. Go. Nice. First. But that 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 could that could maybe tilt me. Yeah. Quite a bit. We've got a little bit of a little bit of a delay here, I believe, to do with Deft. I'm not entirely sure. Well Deft Oh, oh and Deft oh. can confirm. She says, I love you, Peanut. Of, all right, peanut fan in the audience, but I need to talk to you about Deft because he's eight kills away from getting his thousandth kill here in the LCK. So we need a Deft hard carry performance in order eight to get kills. to that milestone. Eight kills in a potential two more games. I hope that he gets. I hope he gets zero. I hope he ends the game zero zero eight. <laughs> That's what I would had think. eight opportunities and yes. took none. Oh, it feels and real I, bad. I really man. hope that Tushin just takes it. Oh, that would be the best. Oh yeah. That would be the highlight. Well, we are on blue side now for King's Own Dragon X. We'll see how the bands are going to change. They banned Zoe, Lissandra, and Callista last time. They're going to start exactly the same way as Zoe's going to hit the bench. And I think that tackling Fly's champion pool seems like a brilliant way to go. Remember. Oh, very fast. The uh, Jace fell all the way through pick and ban in uh, the first one. Yeah, neither one of these top laners are really J. Well, Rascal, I guess, a little bit more so than Cube. Yeah. Are, are Jace enthusiasts. So, Callista, or, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. Cali Star. Yeah, Cali Star going to be taken off the board. Vladimir going to follow the Yasuo on Gen G's side. Yeah. As I'm not entirely sure what Kingzone are actually aiming for here. Rek'Sai is going to be banned. Kingzone now can go for the Jace lock in if they want to. Lissandra is, is up. Going to steal that away from Fly is probably. Oh, he was so close. Really he was licking his lips. He was like, I might get it. Really sad Kingzone that. snap it up as the first big field. We didn't have the camera panned on him when it was insta-locked in by Kingzone. And this was the moment those, his yeah, heart his was heart broken. Yeah, his heart snapped. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we could pinpoint it. Yep. Where's the Simpsons gif when you need it? The Braun, though, is going to go over to life once again. Has been a priority pick, but didn't win in game number one. We have to see what Fly wants to do to actually combat the Lissandra here. Oriana is a champion that many do think can go well in tour. With Zoe being banned away, we're not going to get the spellbook Zoe. Maybe we'll see some shenanigans. Maybe we'll see Aurelian Soul. We could even see potentially LeBlanc locked in for Kingzone and put the Lissandra on the top side of the map. Could be a thing that they decide to do. We saw Griffin banning LeBlanc in both games against Gen G when Gen G beat them. So maybe there's some thinking there. Is Lucian going to be opted in for yet again? And uh, that is the LeBlanc being hovered by Pawn. Ooh. Would certainly be playing their cards face up, but that's the Rakan. So Tucson's going to get the priority pick, and I like this a lot more. So now Gen.G have an option to take an ADC here. Will they pick the Ezreal for Ruler once more? Are they going to try a little bit of a different approach here? Nope, it does look like the Ezreal. Yep, exactly the same composition available for Genji. 
At this point in time, some grins on the faces of the Genji members. Not letting that loss get the better of them, and Ezreal is going to be locked in. So as we enter the second round of bans, we've got both bottom lanes locked away. One solo laner done for King Zone and the jungler in there for Peanut, most likely. Interesting. Long band away. Which... I guess that means Gen G wants to take a melee top laner, and they just don't want the Lissandra to be flexible. Otherwise, I, I really can't read it. Rise being banned away, which doesn't tell us too much, as, again, the Lissandra able to be flexed, and so potentially able to avoid the Rise. Azir, they're really thinking this Lissandra is headed top lane. They're trying to pigeonhole Bond onto the Lissandra, potentially. Yep to guarantee that Fly can just pick up the Ariana and be comfortable in the yep, lane. Right. And I That's think what the, it says to me anyway. The next pick here, regardless, is most likely just the top lane champion. And it, it has to be one that Lissandra can't move into. And then you round out the composition with a counter pick. Zillion. Really That's an odd one. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at Ariana as being the potential lock-in here for Gen Jeep, if they would like to. Juve going to go back to Kenny. Pikachu did a pretty good job in our first series of the night in the hands of Khan. Juve wanting to echo that one. Eight seconds to go, and it is going to be locked in. I do think it is a little bit weird, though. Both the Jarvan and the Kennen are both neutralized by a Lissandra. Yeah. Outright. So, very interesting. And now, it's a counterpick gangplank. So, unless that Kennen is going mid lane. Well, if it's going mid lane, Pawn is probably one of the best historical Gangplank players in the game. So, I remember when uh, Gangplank first got changed. No, the was cannon going mid. Yeah, so if the cannon goes yeah. mid, then you could be followed by the oh, Gangplank. Oh, yeah, could be. Oh, like in the hands of Pawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chongo played the mid lane cannon, though, uh, last time around, and it looked um, ter oh, oh, my goodness, it's happening. Oh, it's happening. Alice. Finally, finally, LS. He's oh. been waiting. He's been waiting, and the Karthus is locked in. I'm gonna need some water. <laughs> Hold on. I like look over at LS's desk, and there's five bottles of water. <laughs> oh, but you need to pour the. Pour, he's pouring oh, over God. his head right now. Needs to cool off. Whew. As the Talia being considered and locked in here for Fly. A lot of magic damage out from Gen G, but Peanut will be building damage once again. But look at this. You want magic damage? King Zone's got it in spades, boys and girls. I am excited. I know you are. I, I can feel really it. Really? You are excited. vibrating on the desk right now. I am glowing. <laughs> Whatever illness I might have had has has just left. Evaporated. Evaporated. <laughs> it is in a different planet right now, as the king of the jungle has been locked in here. Yep. The Karthus picked up. We'll see whether Genji can fight against it. They decided to not go with the Orianna. That actually would have worked out very well in this pile-in composition with the Slicing Maelstrom stunning people up, and then you can get that orb in there. But it's going to be the Talia wanting to control the battlefield a little bit more. Let's see who's going to be able to do it. The debut of Kuz on the Karthus. You best believe he's put his time and effort onto learning him in the jungle, though, because it's been meta for so long. Gangplank Karthus on one team. Yeah, dude. We're going to have some sparks flying. We had some scaling in our first match. You, know, you ain't seen nothing yet, yeah, those the, girls. The, the scaling on this team composition is absolutely in, on it. It's in a different universe. It's in a different time it's zone. It's in a completely different time zone. You thought Thanos was strong. Yeah. You haven't seen Karthus in the jungle. I hope that at least one person understood my rock and roll racing reference just there. <laughs> 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 All right, so Genji, Ezreal, Braum, Talia, J4, and Kennen, they're on the time bomb of their life. They have a bomb strapped to their chest. Yeah. And it's like one of those really weird bombs. I feel like they shouldn't have taken any stopwatches in the perfect timing just because you don't want to have a look at the clock when you're up against the Karthus. It makes you too nervous. It makes you too anxious. As we get into game number two, Kings of versus Gen G. <laughs> wow. Lots of desperation from our Gen G fans. There's a well, lot of Genji faithful that often turn up, as uh, we've got Genji, speaking of which, uh, piling in on top of a ward. You know, that is some value from Tucson. The Genji fans, I think that what they're doing with that yell, though, is they're, they're trying to give Genji the spirit bomb, because that's uh -huh. what they're going to need. Uh -huh. 
But that's not this gonna. Game. I don't think that that's going to arm in time. I don't and think I so either. And I feel like the actual spirit bomb will be the requiem. Yes. And so Genji do uh, understand that they have been on top of the ward, but you can see Kaz is already in position to start up the uh, enemy now, red buff. We've seen Karthus appear in Europe. He's also in Challengers Korea, but he hasn't really shown his head in the LCK. And I don't think that he's shown his head in the LPL. I'm very adamant that he's the best jungler in the game. I've been very vocal about that for quite some time. Now, one of the reasons that he hasn't been picked, according to some Korean players that I've asked at the LCK, is they don't think that he's that strong in the early time. But the problem is, is that he doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. Because there's no jungler that can keep up with his clear speed. And the bomb that he provides, just with his immense pressure, is insane. So here, Cuz. Oh, he's going to be passing. spotted. Yeah, he is going to be spotted, which is a little bit unfortunate. It does look like he's just going to pick up this golem. He's actually going to consume, it looks like, the whole camp. So not just going to leave one of the little Krugs alive so that it doesn't allow for the respawn to occur. And now he's transitioning into his blue side. And another thing about Karthus that's interesting is I think that one of the reasons that maybe a lot of players were hesitant to pick him up is... Oh my goodness, oh. that's an Ignite coming in from Tucson. The Gleaming Quill will be available. The Flash after. This is Battle Rakan. One more auto attack and the solo kill. First blood for Tucson's Rakan. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think the jungle is over. You it was already you, over, but let's it, be honest. Karthus was picked. Yeah, it, it, it really... Well, as, as weird as that sounds, you, you don't get to fall behind against this champion. It's sort of like Nidalee, but more oppressive because he presses R while farming. Yep. It's one of the coolest things in the game. <laughs> and then he gets Dark Harvest stacks. Yeah. And then it gets to a point that once he has the jungle item, he moves while farming because the patience won't expire. So it's really cool. Now, I like what Tucson comes in here and does. He finds Peanut inside of the jungle. And he ignites him early, and I guess uh, what Peanut's thinking oh, is that... Oh, Deft Flash. Feels bad. I, I think, I guess... Hundred, 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 one of the things, though, is that Cuz does have two camps that haven't been consumed yet. And so they're anti-rubber banded right now. Yeah, and that's actually denied camps yes. here from Peanut, so... Which are the two most important camps for Karthus. Peanut comes back in here, confirms that it hasn't been consumed yet. Yeah, Pawn's going to clear that one out. It's that last remaining popcorn chicken. And gets back to fly in the mid lane. He was losing out on a bit of a trade there in mid, and actually you can see he's half the CS of Fly, but this is a full minion wave and a half being thrown in towards Pawn. So he's going to be very comfortable. All right, nicely done there from Rascal. <laughs> this is a pick that actually I wanted to see Nogari pick up a little bit earlier because Nogari's game point is absolutely phenomenal. You can note that our Rascal's gone towards the Grasp of the Undying just to give himself a little bit more staying power here in this lane. Cubey looks like he's heading towards the on-hit build for the cannon as the seismic shove is going to miss Pawn in the mid lane. Press the attack has been picked up. He does have Legend's Bloodline as well. Uh, looking like he wants to try to gank. Wall of Pain going to come down here. Yep, we'll be at a slow up fly for the moment. He is moving himself in the other direction though. Nice Q lands there from Pawn. The fly doesn't have to invest anything and Cuz just comes over. We'll be able to get Pawn a bit of a, a more decent back timing has the teleport, of course, to get himself in here if he would like to, but maybe Pawn doesn't even need to teleport and can start going aggressive. Onto Peanut's location, Lay Waste's being thrown into this brush. Cuz, man, he's just everywhere. He's going to land there onto Fly. Cuz finds himself on the wrong side. Pawn looking to lock down Fly, but now Cuz taking a lot of damage. Here from Peanut, Seismic Shove gets Pawn back into range. The th threaded volley is fantastic. Cuz still has Flash somehow, gets the Flash knockup. Does Peanut, Defile needs to come out as Cube makes the first rotation over. The Q lands, the W's there. And Cuz is going to lose his life. No Requiem available, he's only level five. Genji punished the Karthus. Karthus ended up getting shut down right there. That was 
Some bizarre trade patterns by Pawn and Cuz. It did require Cube to come all the way down from top lane, though, in order to make this work. Yeah. We're checking out the bottom side of the map is Deft and Tusa. Deft completely out of mana. As uh, he wants to trade with these guys. But let's have a look at this one yet again. Yeah. Cuz, I believe, gets so at least the wrap. Cuz ends up getting the entire Raptor camp, missing a lot of his Qs, wasn't toggling E either, so his mana was getting pretty low. He should have probably flashed way sooner before the Jarvan even has the ability to try to knock him up, and he can throw Lay Wastes at Fly to make him angle up to the northwest. And at that point, he probably would have been able to get out. So, some bizarre play. And I mean, even prior to leading up to that, when Fly was below his Raptor camp, when uh, Pawning husband with the gank, they backed off, which was really surprising. Yeah. Because P Karthus is so powerful in a spot like that. It doesn't even matter if Peanut is in the Fog of War. You'll just end up one, you, you'll win the 2v2. And at that stage as well, you just want to farm yourself some Dark Harvest stacks. It doesn't yeah. matter if you die. Just uh, get them Dark Harvest stacks, kill people afterwards. QV is uh, at least able to take down some of these barrels here. Doing a great job. Parlay not able to beat the auto attack speed of Cuvee's cannon. And you can see it is confirmed uh, on hit cannon. Bilgewater Cutlass to come in. Requiem is available now on Karthus. So Gangplank Ultimate and Karthus Ultimate both available. We can definitely have some bot lane parties. Anytime that Pawn is able to get priority in the middle lane. CS actually. Yeah, eating through his corrupting potions very quickly as well. Does have that time warp tonic to keep himself a little bit more topped up. Rascal up here towards the top side of the map just wishes that he could keep some barrels here on in this lane. Struggling just a little bit. The culling flies out. Just avoiding some turret damage. Is death as ruler in life. Just soaked that one up themselves. There's some warning shots coming out there from ruler. As our death does land the piercing light. Utilizes the Guardian Shield very nicely there as well, as Pawn's just wondering why Fly keeps hitting him with stuff. His Pawn just wants to clear out the minion wave, does so very nicely, and does have Teleport to make it back to the lane as he goes back home one more time. Curious to see if the blue buff is going to go over to Karthus, or if it will end up being handed off. Because he does find the Talia, doesn't know about Peanut though. Weaver's Wall in Cataclysm. Yep, the Leywaste are going to come in here. Rascal does have Cannon Barrage available. The globals when it comes to damage is certainly something that they have to be careful of. Cuz going to give away his blue buff. Because as we were talking about before, Pawn was back in base and actually decides not to invest the teleport. Could have potentially got themselves down a, yeah. a ward and been able to... They definitely could have 3v3'd that. that. Absolutely could have been able to 3v3 that right there. Some very bizarre pathing coming out of Cuz this game so far, so his advantage on Karthus not as large as it should be, especially not after that opening. True. Being able to so aggressively just tear apart the enemy jungle and the fact that Peanut was killed by a support in there himself. He's pathing right now onto the right-hand side of the map. They have the priority in the bottom lane. Looks like they want to make a move onto the enemy blue buff, but I think the Peanut should be able to eat that, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's going to be the flash in, though. Gets the chain CC. Cuz lands the wall of pain. Cataclysm means that Tucson kills him again. 100% of the kills on the side of King Zone belong to the Rakan. See whether Tucson's going to be able to transition that into anything else. Like you said, Bertha going to go down. Cuz is going to be able to grab that rubber banded Gromp Camp. And it looks like they're going to transition that once again into a dragon. Without Peanut on the map, this should go over for free. And we take a look at the gold at the top, and Genji is ever so slightly ahead, but that should be expected with the Klepto on the Ezreal. The issue, though, is, is that they're not really ahead when you factor in the scaling. Yeah, well, can they actually steal away this Cloud Drake? The answer is no, as Rule is taking so much damage. The Culling almost kills him just outright as Kuz does have his Flash available. Oh no, it's coming up very, very soon. I think he wants to... He'll get himself suicide. into the back of this pit. We'll see whether he does. He will just suicide. Requiem not going to be invested, and that is very strange. He had that flashback available, but decides that they were probably going to follow. As you can see, Rascal very, very low. Seismic Shove again going to land on the pawn. 
There it is. Rascal throws down the cannon barrage. Cube gets the solo kill under the turret. Oh, man. And just flashes to get himself out. Requiem? Is the Requiem actually going to come in before the back actually lands? And Cuz isn't even going to go for it. Oh, he doesn't actually have the jungle item. I think it, at that HP value, the jungle item would be necessary uh -huh. in order to get the kill right there. So, a little bit unfortunate. Just probably outside of the gold range in order to complete that. Well, Shelly should go down to Peanut here as Wall of Pain comes over. Cuz, can he actually get in? Looks for the lay waste. This is going to be a smite fight. The Weaver's Wall comes in. Cuz steals away Shelly. Oh. Picks her up as well before he goes down. And now the lay waste are landing. We'll see where the Requiem does come out. It's not going to be invested. Two some grand entrance in order to get himself out. And that was the suicidal play that we like to see as Rascal even steals oh, man. Peanuts. Oh my goodness, the flash in gets himself the passive and Rascal, he's even got himself a kill. It's just the abuse case under the Jarvan right now. This game is just not for Peanut as Pawn's oh, able to fly. take down Fly looking for you it. You have to Here in the mid Carthus. lane. Yep, oh, there's the Requiem, the it. last Q is going to land. Oh, but a love shot. Yeah, the trade going to come in, the last threaded volley. Juve gets himself a plate on the top side. But Rascal, I think that he might have got himself just the advantage that he needs, and that plate isn't even going to go down. It's really unfortunate for Cube up here in the top lane. He does have a CS lead. What? We're going to go all the way back to watch <laughs> Peanut die again. Is this going to be like the, the Peanut death reel? Is that what this is? The Peanut eulogy replay? That's not what we want to see. All right, Rascal eats some oranges. We're trying to take it in. Not K this time. All right, this was the ultimate that ended up coming out. We didn't actually get to see how much HP Cubay had remaining. Nor did we see the sick 1v1 between yeah. Lissandra and uh, the Talia. You can see tower plates looking to go down again here on the bottom side. Death, can he actually get it? No, he can't. Oh, no. Not quite. Sizemanshove pushes away all of these minions. Still has the Rift Herald. It looks like he's probably just going to summon it down in bottom lane. Um, or he's going to go home. I think that you do just summon it down in bottom lane, then you use Rascal Gangplank Ultimate on the top turret. Yep. Try to live from oh, Peanut. Right. Shoot. Yep. Shelly is going to be thrown down there as Peanut does get himself the knock up. You can see Rascal just shoots him in the face. And uh, Shelly's going to get her work done down here. I think he's missed. Right? Uh, I think there was a slight knock up there onto Rascal, but it looked a little bit misleading because oranges okay. were then eaten immediately afterwards. Spawn misses a Q. The fly's going to miss his as well. Looking to turn this one around. We're sitting on an ultimate a lot almost of yeah. from Spawn. Now the minion's actually helping out. This Shelly gets the double charge. Double charge completed. And Cuz down there in the bottom lane, he's already level 9. Yeah, Shelly is eventually taken out as Kuz taking a lot of damage there. Taking a turret shot, I believe. Runic Echoes, like we talked about before, finally completed. Item Blaze finishes off that last minion. There's Agatha. They get destroyed here by Athena. Athena really trying can. to find something good on the map. To take Found Agatha. Himself. And now look, he's going to get Scoodle. Oh, there we are. Scoodle Rivers goes down. Absolutely tragic. Heartbreaking, to be honest. But great news here for Cube on the on-hit cannon. Blade of the Ruin King completed and will be able to destroy. The first turret of the game for Genji. It's going to be in response, though, to King's Zone, and you can see the gold is very even. A thousand gold in it means basically the King's Zone's winning. One thing hit by so many side yeah. shots. Basically all of them. This is a living example of the power of Lissandra. Able yep. to get hit by absolutely everything, but. As long as you can locate the Q and E key, mm -hmm. you can still push in the wave and then eventually recall. Yep. And, and if you mess up in a trade, press W, get that aftershock, and walk and away. And then, if you walk away and you're still losing out, you Just press, press the B button and or, then the D them. button straight back to the lane again when all of your health comes back. That's really nice stuff. As our rule is not able to steal away a blue buff with his ultimate. It's more difficult to do that these days. Skuz is looking to just kill whatever he can find on this map. It's not a champion. That'll give him level 10 so that he retains his one level lead. It looks like he's going to be itemizing straight into Void Staff as Gap actually eats the dragon. So that'll, that's 100 gold yep. going over to him. We all know who the carry is. He it's is actually something I think is so undervalued that junglers don't allow the laners to do. 
when there's absolutely no chance of a, a contest, I think giving the dragon to the Yeah, lane. now that it's worth 100 gold. Yeah, yeah I agree. A little bit more of a recent tr uh, change than, yes. uh, than people expect, I think. It's only, uh, I think it was this year that it became worth 100 gold instead of the 25 that it's always been. Finally avoided there from Vaughn. Vaughn knows that you can now walk out of it. Nice enough. Barrel not going to find Cuvee at all. Blade of the Room King trading for it as uh, he does get poked out. Cuvee oh, no. is just really good at destroying barrels. Yeah, Cuvee is so far ahead in the CS department. That's where all of the gold is right now. Yeah. It's on the cannon, but unfortunately, he's not going to be able to as easily transition this into a lead for Genji because he's the on-hit split push style cannon instead of that team fighting cannon. So when we're looking for the engages for Cuve, he's going to be using his ultimate for utility and it's going to be about the auto attacks that are really going to be locking things down. So different cannon to watch in these team fights can still certainly work out. He's going to be mostly about side lane pressure. But Shove doesn't find Vaughn. Okay, Peanut once again getting hunted by Cuz. Right now we are in a little bit of a lull state yet again. You did say earlier that we were definitely due for some Clown Drakes yep. tonight. So we are getting all of the Cloud Drakes. It is an overcast day. Yep. Here in very Kingzone windy, versus Genji game two. And Kingzone... A little bit different than game number one. I think that they're even more content to just allow some of their champions to keep scaling. Yeah, as With long the as they can plank. keep this map as wide open as possible, I think that as soon as Kuz misses out on his camps because Genji have too much map control, that's when you have a big problem. However, the Karthus is able to eat through so many camps so fast that they are putting the pressure onto Genji far more. Clearing out some control ward vision here is now King Zone. Looking for this topside pressure, and Ruler's going to get pushed away from this outer turret. Low half health, but may not actually get taken down just here. Okay, okay just, just gone. Never mind. Kings aren't easily able to get rid of it. Didn't know whether they'd have quite enough damage, but I was wrong. Juve sets up shop down here once again. Trinity Force is done here for Rascal. Okay, barrels are going to go down, and Juve is going to get slowed up. But look at this. He's not going to get deterred from destroying this turret on the bottom side. Red buff now gonna be picked up by Karthus. Yeah, I'm actually out, oh, never mind. He's actually gonna save it. Yeah, he's gonna give Should the red be, buff over yeah. solution most likely, so Deft is going to have that one. Deft gets what Deft wants. And that's going to mean the King Zone are going to claw themselves back into this race towards the gold lead. Very, very close, about 200 gold is going to be in it. See 199 CS. 200 at 1850 is great. Oh, they want to make a play here against Cuve. But see, this is the first time ever Rascal has moved aggressively. Yeah. It doesn't even matter if Cuve has a ward or not. The story that Rascal's been telling this game, that movement isn't congruent with it. Nope. Something is definitely abnormal. You don't even have to be an elite level pro player to just know. Something is definitely off. Yep. And that something might be coming your way. So Cube ends up just backing up. But pretty comfortable for Cube to be in this very long lane as the cannon. Extra movement speed with the lightning rush means that there's not a lot of chance here for King Zone to actually get any ganks off. Especially not when the ganks are gonna come in from a Carthus. But trading farm. Is going to be in favor of King Zone as this game moves further and further towards the late game. Their damage is going to be very comfortably mixed between AD and AP. They're going to have so much AoE and so much control with the Lissandra. It's just a bevy of things that you like to have in team fights. Yeah. Everything is going quite well. And so, okay. another barrel, but it does look like eventually this turret should fall. Yeah. Everyone moving to the Cloud Drake, but it's not a high priority target. Just give it away to Genji. It's not worth losing the game over, potentially. I mean, Cuz can try and steal with late ways, but there's no point in throwing your life away. I think you're exactly right. 
And that's what King's Own decide to do as well. Four to five is going to be the kill score here as 20 minutes ticks over. Baron is alive. Oblivion Orb. Oof. Bad itemization. Is it? Yeah, I'll tell you why. What are you supposed to get? You're supposed to get Void Staff because the enemy already showed you. Aha! Well, Cannon Barrage comes down here. And that's a very, very dead Peanut once again. That's a lot of damage. It's just by the Requiem. Peanut is so, almost all of the deaths. The Requiem will do a lot of damage only to Ruler and I suppose Cannon until he gets maybe Wit's End, which I'm assuming could be next should, item. Could be the next item. And I think it would, it would be actually a pretty good item with the Ezreal and Talia in the team. But the reason that the Oblivion Orb on Karthus is so weird is that there's not any healing, really, on the side of Genji. Not too much. And then completing into Morel and Omicron just feels bad. Yep. It's quite a heavy commitment. And oh. the enemy team already showed that they were investing into magic resistance. And so you should just get the Void Staff. Well, Q-A, gonna get barreled a couple of times, but I'm gonna be hit by the third as Kaz comes in. And q walks away yet again. But what a great game of ping pong we've had here. Yeah, really has been this that. This is the real focus. The Sailor Gangplank, he gave up on his pirated times. You know when you, you play Pokemon and there's the Sailor Pokemon trainers? Yep, that always have magic That's what like, bottom is, yeah. Yeah, and it feels like Rascal is running around using Splash over and, and there's over again. a Gengar that just constantly keeps coming over. Yeah. Well, Kyuubei decided not to go for a Wit's End. He's got a Gitsu's Rage Blade already picked up. As we have a look at the gold difference. This has been slinking between King Zone and Gen G, but never more once again than about 1.7. Echoes what was happening in game number one. And what has Gen G always been struggling with, and that's been having control in anywhere outside of the late, late game, right? Genji as a team for many years has always been, we're gonna beat you in late game team fights. Their early game pressure has not been there, so why not just draft Gangplank and Carthus? So here, looking like it's gonna be like game number one. We got another uh, 17 minutes to go here, Atlas. Hey, but Death this time is 1-0-0. Zero, zero. Has himself a, uh, a bounty. So I'd say that this is actually going better for King Zone, And uh, they won pretty comfortably. In the first game, Fly oh. comes on over. That control one yeah. is going to spot him. And eventually, his tower does go down. Carthus continues to farm, but he's not getting any edges. Yeah, this is almost a flame horizon. Yeah. Oh my god. He's real scared. Alright, Kelling flies in, Def tries to clear out the minion wave, that was nerfed a while ago though, so not going to be too helpful, Weaver's Wall, not going to get Def into a sticky scenario, but he can't clear out the back lane, line minions, and that is going to be the tower most likely falling down, okay, not going to fall just yet, Def actually playing very far up, Ruler does manage to get the last auto attack, and a fair bit of damage, as the pressure from Gen G is starting to pile up. Up in top lane. All right, we'll take down the inner turret. That's going to get something back. That is so strange. Whoa. All right. Rascal trying to do his best holding on here. q is just so damn strong. Yeah. In any 1v1 scenario, it feels like he just has way too much control. The Trump Raj is looking for the pirate, but he moves the other direction. q backs away. Because camp after camp after camp continues to have a level advantage here as the Karthus will go back home, Merlin Omicron most likely in hand. We've got a Zonya's Hourglass completed here for Pawn and a Dash Cannon. He's very happy. And Death is heading towards item number three. But Ruler Void is staff, also finally. Standing. Oh, he actually decided to go he for the Void actually got it. Okay, so nice. this is, now this is fine. Now everything is A-OK. -okay. You have the Oblivion Orb for the Ezreal yep. as well. So Ruler is almost getting true damage. In fact, actually, he might be getting true damage. Not entirely sure what Ezreal's magic resistance is right now, but with the Sword Cut Boots and the Oblivion Orb, the MR could definitely be super high. Yeah, could be that high. Slight advantage now for King Zone as far as gold is concerned, but we're not really looking at the gold here. Oh, 35. Yeah, he's he's. I think he actually is getting true damage. You get the 40% for the, uh, or you get... Yube. He's yeah. just destroying any lane he enters. Rascal just has no answer. All right, well. So Kingzone, yeah, they're going to have to do something because obviously 
Rascal is having quite a bit of difficulty trying to maintain and contain the cannon split push. Jubei heads over to eat the Cloud Drake. He's going to be able to get it. So uh -oh. he's going to, he's going to, he's going to get popped. By Ruler, we'll see whether the Anger Requiem is going to come out. It's not. Cuz holds on to it. And uh, it's just really sad times. It's going to be Genji grabbing that Ocean Drake for free, but no extra being gained for King's own top side of the map. That's just a whoopsie. And uh, LS is uh, almost uh, falling out of his chair. Now I'm actually regretting being <laughs> excited about the Karthus because if they mess up the Karthus, you're going to be even more tilted. I, uh, yes. Because now we're just never going to see it again. Well, unless he just wins anyway. Mate, well, there you go. See? Mm -hmm. No, nah, people will look for reasons why it's bad. Well, on. He takes the claw. He's fine. Gets himself out. No vision available on Baron at the moment. Genji not going to opt in for it or anything like that. It's going to come down. We got 10 CS away from the Flame yeah. Horizon for QV. Oh, he's so far ahead. One last team fight is going to have to be what decides this game. As with another Ocean Drake, there's nothing too exciting. No. You can just give that away to Gen G, and then you have to wait for the Elder. So, as I told you at 23 minutes Atlas, we had 17 minutes remaining. Yep. 13 to go here. QV is 3,000 gold ahead. That's a lot of gold. Yep. Yeah. I, I do believe that um, it's like 2,000 plus 1,000. It's a big amount of money. Yeah. Large money. Bloodthirster. Interesting. All right. Completed for the cannon. Double life steal, overshield. Okay. I guess he uh, wants to be able to just be an immovable object inside of the split push, and that's the win condition now for Genji. He's going to do a lot of damage, but he's still going to pop if anyone comes near him. One comes along over. I don't think that Fly actually saw him make his way in there. No, probably did actually spot him. It's King Zone fighting for control top side of the map, and Cuvee continuing just to try and make himself a nuisance here on the bottom side. Executioner's Calling has been picked up by Rascal just to deny the lifesteal on the cannon. It's absolutely terrifying. The fact that that even had to happen. Lucian will be able to at least take down his red buff. Clears out the chicken's camp as well, and now he'll be able to grab that mid lane. I'll let you get rid of that uh, cannon creep, but Cuvee is getting ever closer. That's a real deep teleport. That though. is. He's going the distance. Yeah. yeah Cuvee, you're you're not long for this world, buddy. Cannon Barrage comes in. That's going to be the ultimate. There's no QSS. The barrel is going to be utilized, and that's it. A thousand gold picked up into the back pocket of the Gangplank. Did come at the cost of the Gangplank ultimate, though, which I'm not entirely sure if it was necessary, given that Tushin... It'll be up relatively quickly. Yeah. I mean, there is some CDR already, 20% completed. Yeah. And Tucson, like you say, uses the redemption to spot out that Baron Pit. It's not going to be done in response from Gen G. So it looks like King Zone just kill the rat and walk away scot free. As LS slumps back in his chair, wondering why no one is doing anything on Summoner's Rift. Why Gen G is just letting King Zone kill their cannon with no response. Well, the, the thing is, is that there's a lot of options available, but people don't... All right, now Baron is yeah. going to get started. There we go. Yeah. The coin flip. Yeah. I think it's actually... Oh, oh they are going to pull away. Tucson, they're looking for they, it. The grand entrance gets uh, the Rakan out of there. Definitely could have burst it, and they just didn't know that they could have burst it. Yeah. Those are the saddest parts. Yeah, well, when no. you pull off the Baron before the enemy actually commits. Control Ward's going to be replaced. Tucson has the Grand Entrance and the Black Battle Dance. Cuz not going to wow. actually give him any options there. As Tucson says, come on, man. Two shot Barrage, but that's just Cuz with no smite necessary. Just uh, takes his own blue buff. Very easily done. Want to actually uh, have a look at Cuz to see how many of his uh, Dark Harvest Axe he's picked up. I'm sure it's not too many at this stage. But as Rascal keeps piling on these items one after the other, what do you reckon the next couple are? You reckon we go for some crit? The Mortal Reminders really, really, really surprising to me because there's no armor on the side. He just wanted to turn his execution as cold. Yeah, I, I guess that that's what he's aiming for there, but I do suppose that crit is probably the 
the next path that Gangplank ends up going. Do you go Static Shiv and a uh, Infinity Edge or something like that? Because you've already got the Lifeline no. pass taken up by the Steric's Gauge. I think that the Static Shiv is not good because they already have so much MR. Uh huh. And you don't need the Shiv at this point for Wave Flare anymore uh, because um, the game's uh, just. What? what? What's this behind enemy lines? Look at Pawn, he's doing an Owen Wilson impression, but that's a great prediction there from Peanut. Puts Pawn in the Cataclysm, doesn't have his claw, does get the cell fault off as Rascal finds some barrels. The Requiem's going to come in. This is all the AoE, and Pawn's even able to survive for so incredibly long. They trade it one for one as Cuz is going to find his way forward. The quickness He's going to tag up Cube. takes so much damage from Death. Double tap and he's dead. And that is Cube with such a huge advantage for, Ki for Gen G just falling down and Kingzone being able to transition into this beautiful ocean drake. Delicious. Oh, I know how exciting. Yeah. That's great. That dragon is... That's what you wanted. <laughs> that is definitely what you wanted after that kind of a commitment in a fight. As, I mean, I guess one of the upsides, though, is that Cuz gets to walk away from this. He's almost level 16 here on the Karthus, and I really like the... Secret Agent Lissandra. Yeah, secret Never mind me. Secret that Agent Lissandra. Mid-tier, one-tier of Genji is still alive, so it's not even like he's going for one of those kind of flanks. Yeah. Weaver's Wall came in here. Requiem being cast by Karthus. And Depp was able to pick up the kill on the Peanut, and then shortly thereafter, Cube oh, the wanted flash. to get himself an orange. Got to get yeah. himself some of the gameplay barrel, so. Sometimes there's some tasty things in those barrels, though, LS. You know, you can't uh, you can't put a man down. You want to have a look what's inside. Having conversations about fine wines. You told me that you've never actually had one. Yeah, so I how know. would you know how valuable they are? I just, you know what? You got me. Yeah, see, there you go. There you go. Someone's got to stick up for QA and what he believes in. I believe in his love of taking down barrels. Benji now actually milling about this Baron Pit, seeing what they can do. He's actually going to get a little bit upset. The control vision is available here for King Zone. So he doesn't want to be tanking this one up. They just want to start it. Yeah, Cubase going to have to teleport oh, if he wants to find his way forward. But Trisha Barrage, yeah, that's not going to lose damage as it goes forward. Ruler not going to get tagged up by these barrels. And Rascal, if he's going to have an impact later on in this game, he's going to have to land those. But that was King Zone's opportunity to go for a Baron. And now it's done because Cube is very, very close to knocking down this inhibitor turret. And it does look like we are destined to have to wait for the Elder Dragon, just like in game number one, Atlas. <laughs> yep, it's feeling like that once again. But I think now Genji do at least have the... Oh my goodness, once again, Owen Wilson behind enemy lines with Sandra. <laughs> here on we the need top some, side of the map. We need some James Bond music for this stuff. Yeah, or some Pink Panther music, depending on what yeah. one's actually going to do here. There's Peanut. He's going to walk right into it. There's a circle of frost. Claw comes out. Claw says, I have the information. I'm the best <laughs> control ward on this map. He yeah, gets his control ward over. But look at this. King's own. They have the vision. They know that he's there. No issues. We're looking for a guardian angel next, I believe, for Rascal. As the BF sword's there. Unless he wants to go just straight into the infinity edge instead. I like the extra damage, though. Clear out minion waves as quickly as you can. That's a big old overshield there for Cube. And uh, Ellis is making some real uncomfortable eye contact right now. He's just, why are they not doing anything? That's what I read. That's what you read? Yeah, that's what I read. Well, that's the at least broadcast appropriate thing of what I read. Okay. I like that. Guardian Angel should be able to be completed here soon, actually, by Rascal. As we, uh, we got two minutes to go until the Elder. So remember the 40 minute mark, I, I told you about that 23 minutes. So yep. yep. We've got, we got a little bit longer to go and need you to hang on tight. All right, I'm hanging, I'm right. hanging. Okay. 200 gold difference between these two teams. King's own one kill in advantage. Look at that, the wall of pain is down and then they go for the sick play of the backs. Arthas is almost 16 and with Pawn having, I, I think he already has 40% CR, he has full monets. I think giving the XP over to Karthus would be a much more valuable choice. But I don't think they would have been able to actually get there to get that one done. Grand Entrance gets Tucson out of there. Control Ward goes down. Pawn's able to get rid of this vision here in the Wolf Pit. And uh, the Baron has been started yet again. King's own with their... But with their pants down just a little bit, they do get the vision. Oh, but man. are they just going to commit to this? Ruler playing frontline. Wall of Pain goes in. And once again, Genji back away. 
because they know that they're going to have the advantage here on the bottom side. Cuvee looking to break oh. over that inhibitor turret, and he does so. Baron now going to get started. You've got the 1v1 coming in here between the Gangplank and Cuvee. But look at that. He's got so much lifesteal. He's completely comfortable. As now Rascal's going to get taken down. Pawn looking to make his way in. The Requiem is going to come down as well. But this will mean that Kingzone will have to give away this Baron. Oh, no. No. It's Karthus. not going to go down. Karthus did too much damage with his Requiem. Yeah, Karthus had other plans in mind. Oh, my goodness. So now Elder Dragon will be going over to King Zone most likely. Well, there are. I mean, Tucson did die. As uh, Def looking to push this wave up. He wants to sleep pursued forward. That's not how the word pursue works. Actually, it's. Cube has teleport up, but so does Rascal. Rascal does not have his Gangplank ultimate available, however. It is halfway back up, though. This is, oh, man. All right, never mind. Lay waste. They were looking real juicy for a second. Because might have to go for a Hail Mary, ha Hail Mary heal here. Frozen Tomb still is available. Yeah. Oh, gets himself in. over. Yeah, they're going to go for this 50-50. There's the pullback. But Karthus is dead, but he's in his death to fight. All right, we're looking for the Elder Drake. It is going to get pulled away from the Layway do go down. And oh, Peanut, Peanut is incredibly low. Deft is inside this pit. That's Rascal. He's got the gigantic shield from the Seraphs. There's the, the redemption. Tucson picks up the kill on the fly. Oh! That's going to be the Elder. It's taken by Deft of all people. Genji do manage to win out on the fight. They lose two members. Only three left alive, but they don't even get the buff that they were looking for, and they're the only ones with the smite. Yeah, that was a really unfortunate circumstance. I'm curious to see if they're going to try to end the game here. Only 10 seconds, though, on Karthus. Yeah, there's another 13 oh, left on Tucson That's as well. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, they will be able to break open the base. Peanut is very close to going down. If Death can actually stop these oh, backs, Requiem. Requiem is available. Oh, Karthus. They are going to spot it. There we go. See you later, guys. That's a double kill. And that should be King Zone picking up the Baron and possibly breaking the base open themselves. And so now the top inhibitor, they don't have a teleport. Oh, they do actually have one available on Pawn. Curious if Deft is actually going to be able to spot him out here. He oh, did. Oh, that was blind oh, as well. Man. Stops that back. Winter's Bite doesn't okay. land. He's looking just to push this one forward. You can see how bloodthirsty Deft is. He's got so much damage. The only member of the team that does have the Elder Drake buff. But who else do you need it on, basically? That top inhibitor turret is down incredibly low. The mid lane inhibitor turret is dead. And Kingzone, they have one thing on their mind. It is going to be that Baron. Barrels come Gone. in. Yeah, they feel like up. they've certainly got to the scaled up stage. And they're going to leave a control ward in this bit because they know no one's going to get over here. They can't challenge for this one. The Baron dies in an instant. And now the Doom push is all that King Zone need as the smoke and mirrors of Gen G, which is the split push cannon, is not an option anymore because now King Zone can basically say, no, you're coming to us. Yeah. Or we're going to end the game, but first, we're going to take a little bit of a pause here. Uh, yeah, do this is still the LCK. All right, calm down. Okay. Calm down with your proactive blade on. Yeah, take a look at this. They take the Blast Cone over, and then interestingly enough, Fly doesn't use the Weaver's Wall at all, and so Deft and friends are able to come back into this. Wall of Pain came down, Rascal. Trying to get some good barrels off. Tushin comes in with the quickness. Pawn on the right-hand side. And right here, Peanut goes all the way back in to try to add a little bit of damage there. And he ended up smiting, I believe, the champion. Did he? His smite I don't went think on. he was in smite range of the Elder Drake. Yeah, he wasn't. That was strange. That was here. really strange. Yeah, yeah. Look at how many of these shots that he tanked. That was... Really sick. Uh, this All is, the burn This damage. is the best feeling in the world when Karthus is on your team. It's the worst when you're against it. Oh no, even he's yeah. please. Oh, oh, look at him. Let's go oh. fast, let's go fast. Cuz was very excited about that record of doing so much damage. And now, this is all the advantage going over to King Zone. We haven't checked in with the gold for a little while, but it's 5,000 in the lead of King Zone after all is said and done. Yeah. I mean, it's 40 minutes though, so gold. Yeah. Really, everyone's basically full item. 
at this point, so it doesn't matter all that much. Telling does a fair bit of damage, guys. Yeah. Just want to point that one out. A fair bit. Ah, uh, this is the problem. When you are essentially a poke and siege comp and you are met with Baron. And also, Kennen doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be in his base trying to defend. He wants to be split pushing. True Shot Barrage does no damage to these Baron up minions. Nexus turrets are now falling down as Rascal is going to get booped back to Gangplank on the wrong side of the wall, but he has the GA. Peanut is going oh. to die as he gets just onto the fountain, but that is not enough. Pawn oh. flashing on forward. Oh my god, the damage onto the cannon as Kaz gets so much health back, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus is taken down and Kingzone get the 2-0 over Gen G. The silver lining for me here is that the Karthus was not oppressive enough yeah. to start warranting bans because then he would get nerfed. Then exactly. he's being played in multiple regions. Yeah, that's that's the right? big problem here. Kaz is actually, he's listened to- Korea um, had to go through hell for a year with Camille. <laughs> Because other regions couldn't pilot Oh, that's pilot true. Her. I mean, LPL was even worse, right? Because right. LPL played her from the jungle much right. better than any so, other region. So, Camille terrorized yep. this region for a year due to other regions' incompetence. Yep. All right. Now, if Karthus ends up showing up too much in, in LCK, that's two major regions. That would get him nerfed. You can't have that. Devastating. Absolutely, Absolutely devastating. Yeah. Well, I wonder whether Death is actually going to be able to pick up the MVP here. He was the one that was able to steal away the Elder Drake. I have a feeling that yeah. Kuz might be in line for another one, but Death played this game out much better and actually was, I, he was the perfect bridge for getting Gangplank and Karthus into a late yes. game stage. And I think Secret Agent Lissandra, whilst being certainly great, uh, didn't necessarily get a whole lot of work done as far as making right. things happen. So Tucson and Deft, I think uh, the MVP belongs to at least one of those hear this game, because Tucson got a solo kill on the uh, jungle in the other well, game. Well, I mean, well. we, we, we do process of elimination. Is it the game plan? No. No. Is it because I actually don't think so. I think that his pathing was... He didn't win enough. I, no, he, he didn't win enough, especially given how gross of an advantage he had early on. In fact, he actually made Karthus look balanced. Yep. So, Which is great for Karthus enthusiasts such right. as yourself. Exactly. You know, so, so maybe we do give him the MVP. <laughs> so we can't give it to Cuz. <laughs> okay. Then you have Pawn, and he was Secret Agent Pawn. Yeah. At some point, but I don't think that we can give it to him because no. he ended up getting caught out. There was definitely some chaotic stuff going on there. So yeah. process of elimination. We're down to Deft and Tushin. Deft got the Elder. He set up the Karthus Requiem. He did. They got the two kills and the Baron and the Baron. Yeah. And that actually and gave King's own their first things. big their first big lead. lead. I think I think it's Def. But I think Tucson Def. killed Peanut. That is true. In their jungle. That is true. I, I, I think it goes Def, Tushin, Pawn, Cuz, Rascal. I agree. I think I think you've got the right uh the right I think idea. That's the order of MVPs. I think the choice between Tucson and Def can go either way, and right. I wouldn't be too upset. I think the real MVP of the match, honestly, though, is is QA. In, in all seriousness, because. He, yeah, was, he was the most valuable player in that game, by far. Just unfortunately, he yeah. wasn't on uh, on the winning team. That Karthus Requiem, even after uh, yeah. Gangplank had died, able to dish out enough damage to repel them. And also from then the Bonnet made the rotation down, yeah. so they get the kill. Cool champ. Yeah, pretty cool. I do like seeing the on hit cannon make his way back and actually look, you can see exactly yeah. why he actually that decision was made. Pretty good success. Yep, Neon here, big smile on his face, as usual. He's always smiling. Yep, his team certainly won a game there as Pawn and Akon, old friends on different teams back in 2014. But uh, certainly still close Samsung boys. It was Looper that was joining uh, Pawn back in the day on Samsung White. How Samsung Blue Looper? was... Uh, he doesn't even play solo queue anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. think. He, uh, he played some old Akali on the top side of the map and then... Uh, Dot a, away into you know, obscurity. Dot A still plays. He hovers anywhere from D3 to like. Really? Master 100 ish. Yeah. Does he still play just TF and Yasuo? Nope, nope. He plays abundance of things. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I remember Kids when he was back D. on Masters 3, and as soon as you banned away three champions from him, he just didn't do anything. It was a little bit unfortunate. Dot A, a phenomenal player, though. And uh, has a gigantic legacy, and a lot of the players here in this game yeah. had a lot of legacy as well. But unfortunately for Gen G, theirs wasn't strong enough to get them over the line. It was a 2 0 from King Zone Dragon X, and now second place is actually a very real thing for this King Zone squad. 
They are going to be going to the MV MVP interview, but afterwards we're going to have a look at the standings, and the standings are going to be very, very interesting as we wrap up this week. Still only two more weeks to go, and uh, next mean, coming weeks are going to be very exciting as far as King where these uh, standings are going to go. Kings don't actually have two relatively easy matches potentially yeah, coming until up Griffin, inside right? of yeah until Griffin. Right at the very end there, they have KT and they have Afrika. Yep. So they have that going for them. We're taking a look at the highlight. And actually, I'm really glad that we showed Cubase highlights here that because was, he did yeah, play that was, very, that was, very, very well. There was 300 HP remaining on the cannon. I don't think he's in Dark Harvest range. I think Karthus Requiem deals like anywhere from 205 to like 220. I'm pretty sure uh, Karthus didn't even get a, an assist on uh, yeah. that particular kill on Peter. Yeah, th th this was really weird. This was Cuz really trying to overforce something for absolutely no reason. And right here, this was... Yeah, this is the Trinity Force right here. I'm actually really glad that QV deserved that many people to come down and kill him. Yeah. This is a uh, shout out to QV. Yeah, QV right? did a fantastic job on the cannon in this game. I definitely had Gen G won this. Yeah. He I actually think that there, was, there needed MVP. to be three people. Cool ability on our screens right here. going to see who ends up getting the MVP in a second. This was Tushin just barely missing out on Fly there, but... That was Def finishing it off. Yeah. Def finishing it off. And then right here, definitely some unfortunate circumstance. Wall of Pain was able to be cast. Definitely maximizing values on those late waste. And the Elder Free... Yeah, look at this. Yeah, Pena goes into the stopwatch, then flashes to get out of the way of Def, and then Def just keeps fighting Yeah, he the smited! Elder. He smited Rascal! And then it goes down to 37 oh health, God. and he misses the flag! Oh my goodness. Now what a comedy of errors. I would smite Rascal in that situation. Oh wow, look at Ruler just burning down with the Elder Drake that Peanut could have got for his entire team. He could burn boiled water with mistakes like that. Mm -hmm. I'll let that sink in. Burn boiled water. <laughs> Are we going back to our Steam conversation again? It, was that a test? Was that a pop quiz? Did oh, you just give me a pop quiz and I didn't even know? My grandmother would always use that as an insult when someone can't cook. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they could burn boiled water. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad they are. That's actually, That's actually pretty good. That is definitely a grandma joke. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Also, what was fantastic was 20,000 damage being done by the jungler once again. Cuz doing a, a whole bunch of work, not actually getting the highest in the game this time, but quadrupling that of his opponent in the yeah. jungle. Karthus is a good champion, LCK teams. And uh, don't worry, Cuz um, kept it subdued for LS so that we don't get too many Karthus bans, and uh, he continues Maybe to poke his head up. Maybe he gets to poke his head up. I, I would yeah. be very excited to cast, but not when I'm not on the deck. Yeah, well, Death, Death is going to be able to pick it up. And that is going to put him ahead of Chovy, 1.1k. On the MVP points, we've seen players win the MVP award with less. Yep. And so right here, Daft coming over the edge right there. That was some nice damage on Karthus Requiem. Right here as well. That's a beautiful channel. Daft doing a fantastic culling right there. Able to also follow up on Tushin's engage onto Cube. You have to wonder what Cubay was actually doing right there. Well, the barrel right thing. Yeah. Barrel. Really needed the oil. Yep. Gets it. And Deft, first place for the Alpaca, out on his own, breaking that 100 gap between himself and Chovy. Not sure who's going to be playing next, whether it's Griffin or King Zone. See whether Deft is going to be able to come out ahead or whether Chovy, in a bounce back week potentially for Griffin, could actually find his way on top as. Uh, LS is digging through to see no, the, who's the there MVP to challenge award him. actually seems pretty hard for uh, mid laners. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. it's yeah. Chovy, yeah. right? Yeah, it's mostly it's only Chovy, right? Chovy yeah. and then Showmaker. Yep. Well, we are going to throw it over to the MVP interview, so let's throw it over to Ji Sun to translate. Thank you for guys. Thank you for the translation, and we're going to be doing it because Def for today's MVP interview. Well, Gen Z recently defeated. Griffin recently, so how did you prepare for today's series? It was more like a stomp. Game 1, I am satisfied with my own performance, but Game 2, I was literally that playing clean, so I'm sorry for my teammates. 
I'm gonna, I gotta do better next time. That, I was stay serious. Did it go as you planned? As a team, game one. Well, I had some hard time because I, my flash was down, but game two, I just wanted to play as the uh, matchup is. So I think I fairly did it well. <laughs> Well, some of the laners are having some hard times, but because you were able to kind of turn the game around, but in game two was a very, uh, you guys performed really great. So we want to talk about draft first. Nami, GP, Karthev, there were a lot of unexpected picks. So Deft, I want to ask you about the Nami. Well, it's not that we saw it on competitive games. Uh, during the screams, I thought we were thinking of some support champions to play with Lucian and get some good results with Nami. And this didn't, this actually did not happen during the screams. Was it better at screams? Yes. We were having an easy game, taking the first turret, but. Day four, we did it a lot of gank in the bot lane, so I was having a bit of a hard time. Well, bot laners were suffering, but because you were able to play around top and mid lane and gain the momentum back, was that your own decision? It's, well, it was one of my decisions, but I think all the other players were on the same page. And I mean, if I keep going for the bot lane, it, actually, it was actually Nami on our support. So it could have been harder, so I would just rather want it to play around the Vladimir. Game 2, you played Karthuk. Was that a pick for today? Or does just, did it just come out in the middle of the pick and ban? We have been preparing it as a team, but I personally think Karthus is a good pick. But, but today was not the day that I was expecting to play it, but suddenly it just came into my mind. So yeah, I just locked it in without plan. But you had a great concert, right? You had double kill on your Requiem. In game 2, I want to talk about the Elder Drake. So first, let's go through the replay. There were a big fight on the top side, but you were consistently doing damage on the Elder Drake. Was that your own decision? Or did your teammates told you to do so? Well, I did that by my... I mean, that was my own decision. Because I thought taking the Elder Drake would be more helpful. But actually, four of your teammates went down at the team fight, but you secured the inhibitor. So that was a situation where the Genji players were very low on health. So I was expecting them to pay, uh, actually try Baron, but well, so they made they gave me the opportunity for us to pick up so many kills. That was the moment that you guys turned the game around. And I want to talk about these today, actually. Pawn has a lot of encounter with Pinot in the jungle. Was that all planned or calculated? Well, speaking of side lanes, it was about the cannon's item build and also Pawn said he, I would rather just play around the jungle so he tried some proactive plays over there. And Deft, in the very early stage of the game, Rakan solo killed jungle and we had the mic check on stream. What happened after that? So that was a situation where I thought that J4 would use his flash, but he actually did not. 
So I couldn't pick up the kill. 어쨌든 이득을 보고 시작을 했다. 아주 좋은 장면이었습니다. 이렇게 좀 경기 내부적인 얘기 또 약간 사이드적인 얘기까지 해봤고요. It was really good to hear about some behind story of the players. You guys are. You guys are going to face KT Roster in your upcoming series. How are you going to prepare for that? I think KT they also have a huge potential. So we have to do our best, and I just hope to pick up good results just as just as we did today. Left, you are on the first place of the MVP standings. And also, all the five Kings of players are performing so well recently. So, how are we going to prepare for the KT Roaster series? Oh, you mean the KT Roaster match? Before today's match, Score texted at me to make sure to take down Genji, so I kept that promise. So I'm gonna make sure to take down KT Roaster next week. Today we had a wonderful game, so let's give a warm round of applause for the Kings of Players. 진짜 이제는 빠지는 라인이 없네요. 네, 다시 한번 축하드리고요. 다음 경기도 기대해 주시겠습니다. 선수들 만나봤습니다. 감사합니다. 네, 오늘 경기 모두 마칠게요. Thank you very much, Jisun. And uh, Kingsman Dragon X able to get that 2-0 better than the 2-1 they were able to put together um, pretty shoddily in their first round robin performance against Gen G. So Kingsman, as the season draws to a close are looking better and better and are now one match away from SKT and Sandbox sitting at 10 and 5 as opposed to the 11 and 4 with these guys neck and neck. But look at that, plus 10 in comparison to plus 11 and 12. This battle for top two is actually getting very, very, very close. Yeah, and you know, speaking of the battle for top two, the battle for bottom two yeah. is still raging as uh, who's going to get ninth? Atlas. That is the big question, as everyone there is neck and neck. Yeah. I'm so. excited to see what's going to happen. We're going to have a look at that final race to get out of the relegation zone. Afrika, they've got two KT wins on the board. The easiest road. Or do they? Yeah, I, th I think they do, right? Do they? Hanwha Life, Dom one, that doesn't look too hard, Hanwha too Life, easy. Dom yeah, but they King have... Zone. They have uh, that's a toughie. They, well, Jin Air, Hanwha Life, I think it is... Actually, that's true. Everyone's Dom just got a sandbox. really hard yeah, road, yeah. right? But they have Jin Air. That's true. That's true. You see that one, so, you feel like that's going right. to be a good one. And everyone knows that Jin Air's final win of the season comes on the last game day against Griffin. That is true. That's so already be there set for that. in stone. That is set in stone. Yeah. Speaking of what's set in stone, Griffin versus Hanwha Life when we come back on Thursday, and then Kingzone versus KT afterwards. Kingzone going to need to keep getting these wins on the board. But if Griffin keep losing... Then Sandbox, SKT, even Kingzone have chances to meet them up there towards the top. We were thinking that Griffin were going to far and away demolish their way forward and grab the victory, but they're only one match victory ahead of their opposition now. And honestly, anything could happen with only two more weeks left of play to go. So thank you very much, Griffin, for keeping it competitive, the battle for the top spot. Yeah. And Griffin is going to have to show us if they can actually get back into shape. Yep, exactly right. But they do now have a few days to bounce back. It will be Thursday that we're going to see you again. Thank you so much for watching this week. Thanks for putting up with LS and I being a little bit sick this time around. Thank you very much. We really appreciate not uh, getting completely flamed out or anything like that. We managed to get some carpus. It was a great week of League of Legends in the end. And uh, we will see you back for even more of it next time around. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you on Thursday. You take me higher when I feel low. Make my world brighter when I'm alone. I keep on rolling, but with your fuel. Like my gasoline, that makes my dream come true. Cause it's just the beginning.
sábado, sábado, sábado. Sábado, 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 sábado. Ok. Ahí está.